It is 7.30. Welcome back to Ark Salt Lake, where we cover authentic, relevant, and community stories. A single blood donation can save the lives of up to three people. Every two seconds, someone needs a blood transfusion in the United States. We have an ARUP expert live in studio with us now with Marion Lincoln. Well, Dr. Wasim Amani is here now. He's in charge of ARUP, the executive director. Glad to have you along with us. And we've seen a really big hit. I get, did it start with uh, with the pandemic? They couldn't do as many blood drives and that kind of thing, but the need is still there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's actually an international problem. Our aging donors have, you know, have illnesses and are on medications that prevent them from being able to donate. And over the years, as they've you know moved on with their lives, we have not been able to replace them with younger donors. And so, overall, we just have less donors, and the pandemic didn't help that. Yeah. Let's talk about ARUP, uh, and you know. You where I'm hearing that you're the sole provider for the University of Utah Hospitals, the Huntsman Cancer Hospital, and blood donations stay in Utah. Can you talk about that for those who may not know that? Yeah, ARUP uh, was established in 1984. We are firmly planted in the community and we never ship our blood outside of state lines and almost all of it stays within our you know, 50 mile radius of where we collect in Sandy. Well, I think some people are afraid to donate. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're afraid they can catch something or, or something will be found out. How easy is it to donate? It takes about 30 minutes, 35 minutes to donate blood. And there actually have been studies on new donors who come in, and many of them actually are very afraid, obviously for, for good reason, not knowing what the process is like. And what they found was after the donation is done, all of those feelings go away and what they have is euphoria. And it actually outweighs the fear of coming to donate, which is why people come back to donate. Um, in terms of you know catching something, you know we're essentially a medical facility, so we treat everyone like you would if you were to go to your doctor's office. Yeah. You know, if you're if you are scared to donate, whether it's you or you know some of um, what some of those uh, blood technicians actually say to people, how do you get people to overcome their fear? What do you say to them if they're nervous the first time? Maybe it's just a fear of needles. You yeah. know, what do you say to them? So I can tell you that. Before coming to Utah and uh, being the medical director of ARUP Blood Services, I had never donated before. I was afraid of needles, <laughs> and they actually got me comfortable enough to sit down and donate. Um, one of the things that we pride ourselves on is that we're a community blood center, and so we treat everyone like in our community like their family because we are here, um, and we're only here so that when someone comes in, we get to know them, and we help them relax a little bit before uh, you know, we get into blood. I know walking through the whole process, you fill out a form, you go through this saying if you've been exposed to anything, it goes through your history, your health history, and then they test for, I think it's iron, just a little blood prick on your finger, and then you're ready to go. And they, they sit you down, and like you said, the, the, all the techs are really helpful, and it, they, they have you squeeze a ball maybe maybe to get the blood right and they don't go too tight on your arm but it's all to help the process go faster and it's I've done it a few times at ARUP and it's always an easy process and they have great snacks <laughs> they do have good snacks <laughs> so someone gives blood maybe and that's all they think about it you know and maybe it's an obvious question but I mean give us all of the examples of how this blood is used like give oh. us an, a scenario of the different ways it gets used in the community. Yeah, one of the things I'd like to highlight to the potential donor is that it's not just about the patient, it's also about their health. You know, coming into the blood center is kind of like a mini physical. We take your pulse, your blood pressure, and your temperature. We ask you a bunch of medical questions, and it's not uncommon every month that I diagnose someone with high blood pressure and send them to their doctor to be mm. treated. Mm. Um, on the patient side of things, it's extremely important. You know, the largest group of patients that receive blood are chemo patients. They can't produce their own cells, and so Many of them receive transfusions two, three, four times a week. And so without a continuous supply, you know, we would run short. And we have a lot of cancer centers here, amazing cancer yes. centers. But that leads to the next question is, um, I know some people, when I've posted before, they say, how can you donate if you're a cancer survivor? Can, people, can all people who are cancer survivors donate, or can some donate and some not? Our general rule is five years after your last treatment, you come and donate. There is an exception, um, especially in Utah, with the sun being out and everyone being outdoors, squamous cell and basal cell cancer. If you get those removed, you pretty much can come donate right away. But 
but otherwise it's a five-year waiting period. Okay. And there have been other populations in the past who have been restricted from donating. Uh, gay men, mm -hmm. uh, don't, blood donors aging out as well. Talk about some of the other groups that have faced restrictions in the past and where things stand now. Yeah, we've been really fortunate. We were able to move very quickly when the FDA allowed gay and bisexual men to be able to donate. We were the first ones in Utah to allow that to happen, and we were probably one of the first in the country to allow gay and bisexual men to be able to donate blood. Um, under the new FDA guidelines, they're allowed to donate if they're in a monogamous relationship for at least three months, and they're not on pre-exposure prophylaxis. Um, in terms of the other donor populations that we've helped out, we've uh, been able to look at a lot of the, our rules around people, for example, who have had heart attacks or strokes, uh, especially in the older populations, and we've been able to look at the risk of what what the true risk is and the reality is when you donate you actually decrease your risk of heart heart attack and stroke so it's good for them to be able to donate so we've been able to loosen some restrictions in that way as well and we're covering stories every day on people who need those blood donations to be it from crashes or shootings that kind of thing and that's where your blood goes also is to help provide help save lives here yeah. in Utah. One of the biggest hits we take um, isn't just the you know the general baseline that we need for our cancer patients, it's the very dramatic someone needs a lot of blood and it drains our inventories and that's when we're scrambling just like we are just after the holiday weekend. All right. Okay, it was a tough one. Yeah, definitely. Dr. Wasima Nani, thank you so much for joining us. We thank appreciate you. it. Yeah.